Hi, welcome to another edition of Cook This. I'm your host, Pete Calvetti. This is your favorite local TV show where we take some local celebrity chefs, restaurateurs, entrepreneurs, bring them into our studio and have them cook some of their uh, favorite dishes off for our celebrity panel of judges, which today we have Mr. Matt Cindy with us. Thank you I for do. joining us Thank again. You taking time out of class to come and eat with us. It's really difficult for these <laughs> teachers here. We have uh, Mr. Gale with us. Morning. Morning. And Mrs. Patty Farley, welcome again. I bring my class with <coughs> me. <laughs> Excellent, thank you. Yeah, thank you, class. Um, so today we have Nixon's Eatery in located downtown LaGrange. Great place, been there for a couple years. Um, I've heard great things about it. I stepped in there, saw great things, great menu. And this is the, one of the owners, Mr. Nick. Um, also RB alumni here, just so you know. Good. So right. we have two RB alumni here back. doing the show. Happy to be back. Oh, yeah. Happy to be back. So he's gonna be uh, explaining about his restaurant and his first place, which is a seasonal fish. So get a load of this one. Thanks for having me. Excellent. Uh, so today we're going to be preparing uh, Lake Superior uh, whitefish, and we're going to put a Parmesan crust on that. It's a seasonal fish right now, very in season, very fresh, and this is the seasonal fish on our actual dinner menu. So um, we're going to we're going to Parmesan crust that, and then we're actually going to serve that with some crispy duck fat potatoes. Ooh. Okay, the the duck fat has been rendered down off a really high quality duck. Uh, from Indiana, and uh, we're going to top it off with an arugula salad uh, that's Ooh. been a little bit uh, truffleized. Okay, nice. uh, truffleized arugula. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> that sounds like a technical that truffled truffled vinaigrette. <coughs> right. um, so truffle we're vinaigrette. located downtown Lagrange, Regional American Fair. A lot of the menu uh, items are inspired by uh, travels we had before we opened the restaurant. Um, Lagrange typically translates to the barn in French, so we kind of played off of that. We're kind of your real slice of Americana and it's very rustic and cozy inside. Okay, so I'll, uh, I'll walk you through the first phase here. We're gonna heat up some canola oil and right here we have a beautiful filet of whitefish and we're just gonna go ahead and bread this in our Parmesan crust. That's a mixture of panko, which is a really nice uh, br uh, dry uh, breadcrumb which gives it nice texture for the crisp factor. And then uh, Parmesan cheese, uh, parsley, salt, pepper, and a little bit of garlic, okay? Nice. And we're just gonna we go ahead. garlic here in the morning. <laughs> 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 now, Chef, how long will this seasonal fish be on your menu? This, this will probably be another couple months. Okay. And then um, I'm really a fanatic on soft shell crabs, and those are coming in season within two months, okay. and uh, uh, we'll probably be switching off to the soft shell crab. But right now, this has been very popular, uh, very light, and I do I try to do four different menus a year. You know, the staples really stay on there, but um, this is a really light uh, way to start off spring. Nice, white fish is a good, nice light fish. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give this a gentle push down, make sure that's all adhered to it pretty well. And I have hot oil, and you're gonna drop the fish in the pan away from you, okay? Non-stick preferably, and that's just gonna go ahead and crust up real nice for us. We're gonna turn that over in about two minutes. If you don't mind handing me that cover down there. What type of oil are you using for the fish? This is a canola oil, very clear, clean, uh, high smoke point oil. And while that's going, <coughs> I'm gonna get this pan hot off to the left here. And we're, we're gonna heat up some duck fat and that's gonna go with the potatoes that are already kind of cooked off and blanched and we're going to Fry them in here to pick up some of that nice duck fat flavor and a little crisp action, okay? I think it's the first duck we've had in here. Yeah. yeah. For so. years. I'm sorry for you. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I went to go meet with them yesterday. I'm like, you know, we were talking about restaurants, and I'm like, there was this one show on TV, and they served uh, duck fat french fries on Saturdays only. And he's like, <laughs> I got them right now. I'm like, nice. <laughs> got them all the time. I was awesome. trying to get them to go with some duck fat, too. Yeah, yeah I said, he I was taking my wife out to lunch, so. <laughs> So Next what, time. what are the key characteristics of duck fat? Well, basically, it's, it's very rich. Um, it's a natural fat. You know, even though it's a fat, it, you know, it sounds bad for you, but um, you know, it's not processed. It's right off the bird, and it's very, it's 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 a clean, kind of rich, almost creamy consistency um, when you cook with it. I absolutely love it. We actually fry our egg in it too. That goes on top of our uh, peppercorn Colorado elk burger, um, wow. and wow. we wow, we, we top it off that way. So as a little nice cream factor nice. to the uh, elk, because the elk is kind of lean, grass-fed out of Colorado, okay? So our oil's going hot here, and I'm just gonna give it a quick little check. That's nice and hot, we want it a little bit hotter. Our fish is coming out beautifully brown. That's what you're looking for, okay? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I've always said nice brown food equals flavor. You know, you really wanna build that color contrast, okay? 
So the characteristics of an American menu, because that's what you start out, that's what you're, what are the key characteristics of an American menu? Well, for us, it's basically, uh, you know, it goes off of regional inspiration. So it's not, you know, your typical, you know, uh, cheeseburger and nacho fare, or, you know, sometimes American food gets a bad rap, but there's so much uh, to learn about different cultures throughout the U.S. that, you know, what, what is so nice about American food is basically, you know, you could travel all over the country and you don't even have to go overseas and see so many new things, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and, and that's mm -hmm. what we kind of fell in love with, and that's what we try to bring to the menu. A lot of it's our own touch, um, but at the same time, we like to play off classics, you know, that we've had down south or out east or you know, uh, out west somewhere, and do it our way. What are the average price points of the restaurant? What are we looking at? So our sandwich, uh, our sandwich, um, lunch sandwiches. I'm gonna go ahead and drop these duck fat potatoes. Okay. We're gonna lean, lean, back. <laughs> lean back. Lean <laughs> back. We're looking for some nice. The kids understand that line. I, I got all it. you to do. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, and that's gonna finish up. Price point sandwiches for lunch. We also have a nice uh, selection of crafted sandwiches for dinner between $9 and uh, $12. Oh, okay. Dinner Reasonable. entrees yeah, between 17 yeah. and 22 We really want something for everybody at Nixon's. We try to stay approachable. We have a strong foodie following. We have a strong mm. regular local crowd. Families, date, you know, people on a date night. We really... You hear that, guys? How, how yeah. many seats? Uh, we have about restaurant. 95 seats in the okay. restaurant. Okay, okay. Any, bar. Nice Any outdoor seating? I don't know where we the place is. Seating, I yes. know. Okay. We're just okay. we're just south of uh, National City Bank, north of Starbucks. Big sign. Okay. Nice little patio up front. I know where the theater is. So it's at it's before the theater. Before the yeah. theater. Come along, great feet. I'm gonna okay. put right. over here. Okay. Duck fat potatoes are going. Okay, I'm so, getting ready. So Nick, I have to ask you, of course, about your culinary training. Yes. So, as an RB graduate, Mrs. Morley. Yes. And you were motivated then to go into culinary right from high school, or have you got? You know, I think it was it was somewhat after. I didn't attend college right away, and then you know, uh, a year after that, I just worked uh, kind of in the industry. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, I got to get to culinary school and and get a basis, and you know, kind of learn the fundamentals of of cooking and sure. and, and that. From there uh, was really where it all took off. Uh, I learned a lot in culinary school. I learned more on the job. Sure. Um, yeah. But you know, sure. you, I think if you're looking to um, get into this field, it's a wonderful industry. But I think you know, school definitely is very important to get to get the really understanding the basics, basics and the fundamentals, and fundamentals of it. Okay. A lot of people do it, you know, just kind of working their way up uh, in the industry. Uh, you know, becoming a chef. There's so many nice programs out there today that offer Correct. such nice training before you, you get into the field. I'm going to go ahead and put this aside. Duck fat potatoes are coming along. I picked these chives from my garden this morning, okay, and uh, spring is here. Very nice and fresh. So you and I'm try just to go purchase ahead. things that are indigenous to the area? Absolutely. Indigenous. Yes. Miss Farley, indigenous. Yeah, he's got a lot to talk about. We'll do that Practice. in the next segment. But, uh, <laughs> So he because he gets his herbs. He was just talking about the arugula and it's the first pick of the season and stuff like that. A little bit of salt and we'll pepper. We got some one. fresh chives going in. Does anybody smell that duck fat? Yes. It's a really strong kind of nice, not really gamey, but subtle flavor. So you want some? We're seeing more and more duck fat on menus. When do you think that started to get more play? I mean, it's really a classic, but it seems to be Since more popular. Banning it probably. Right. Well, the okay. foie gras was banned for a okay, while. Right. Um, right. And you know, I, I would say, <laughs> I would say the more it's available, um, you know, the better it is because sure. it's you're it utilizing the whole bird. You know, if you're gonna eat meat, I, I think you right. should eat the whole animal. You know, mm -hmm. and not throw it away. So, not to gross any vegetarians out. No. But you know, I've seen it around for quite some time. Yeah, um, it it's just, just seems more popular. I'd say the past five years, even yes. myself, I've loved to cook with a little bit more. Okay. So the price point must have come down. Too. Yeah. Okay. And we're going to go ahead on over this here. Is this is this. This is our okay. moment. Yeah. I didn't know yeah. breakfast because I knew we were. At least you're getting some potatoes. Going yeah. to be yeah. served. No, <laughs> I know. Are the potatoes a regular menu item? These are just for the seasonal fish right okay. now. Oh, okay. Okay. But I noticed you did have a lot of sides. Do uh, we, we do have a lot of sides. Like you can and get a fruit cup. You absolutely with your can. Sandwich or a tater tots. You know our mac and right. cheese is fantastic. Yeah. It's a smoked gouda mac and cheese. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. <laughs> and basically, we're gonna finish this with a truffle herb vinaigrette. Okay. Mm, and we're gonna go ahead and toss this right over here. Oh, that's quick. 
Do you help design the menus then, or do you have right someone else? Okay. That and we're just gonna kind of. Okay, and basically, I like to serve that with nice. a little bit of lemon. Wow. This arugula Ooh, comes yum. from a local uh, farmer friend out of Marengo. It's the first crop of the season. Ooh. And here's our Parmesan crusted white fish, crispy duck fat potatoes, and a truffled arugula salad. Enjoy. Sorry, Gorgeous. Farley, we're taking yeah. That's Blaze. okay. Good job. That's okay. You guys just take one bite and let me know what your first uh, taste is. Gotta try the truck. You gotta try the arugula I before it That was nice, the fish fried up nice. Thank you. Thank you. Well, yeah. stove. <laughs> and you know, try to get the vinaigrette and the potato all in there. What kind once. of vinaigrette was this? And the arugula will actually cut through the richness of that crust. What kind of vinaigrette fish. was this? This is the truffled uh, vinaigrette, truffle like oil, racing. truffle oh, oil, um, oh red goodness. wine vinegar, Ooh, red can wine I, vinegar, yeah. truffle oil, um, a little bit comments. of balsamic, oregano, yeah, I saw the balsamic in there. a little bit of lemon juice. Okay, what did you guys and, try? I'll uh, try something will. different. Well, I think the combination of textures. Is, is the best part. There's really kind of the soft with the arugula, mm -hmm. but then the potatoes and then the crispy breading of the, the fish. Great. It's a nice combination. I like Very your good taste. Very good taste. Good. And also I liked how the potatoes really picked mm -hmm. up the duck fat. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It in. Absolutely. Excellent. Miss Farley? I would agree. Um, I love arugula, so this is yeah. lovely with the truffle. Just Wonderful. It's just a little hint of that, and the fish is superb. Very good. I haven't gotten to the potatoes yet. I'm oh, sure. Oh, take your time. We're going after to a commercial break. break. I was going to say. All right. Thank you, Chef. That was our fish for breakfast. When we come back, we're going to oh have gosh, some uh, awesome. Carolina <laughs> shrimp and grits. That's going to be interesting. <laughs> Stay tuned. We'll be right back. All shrimp. Right. Very good. All right. <laughs> I need help. Surprise. Hi. Right, welcome back to Cook This. Uh, we have Mr. Nick here from Nick's Eatery, downtown LaGrange, cooking us some great breakfast plates like fish and sandwiches. And uh, now we're going to have some Carolina shrimp and grits for breakfast. That's going to be great. Um, he's going to be serving it to our celebrity judge panel over here, Mr. Matt Cindy, celebrity. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Gail, <laughs> and Mrs. Patty Farley. You guys are celebrities, celebrities on the show. Now. Come on. Wow. A couple okay. seasons now. Yeah. 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 That's um, never been part of mine. Oh, did I? I, I? I've been calling you Nick for so long. That now it's just Nick's Eatery. I'm just kidding. Nick Sin's now. Eatery. Right, uh, so he's going to be making our Carolina shrimp and grits. Take it over. Okay, uh, fantastic. And uh, basically, this dish originates from the south. If you go to the south, you will see it all over the place. Um, and there's there's good versions, and I don't think there's uh, sometimes versions that should be up to par. So what I did um, is basically, you know, I mentioned it, we did some traveling before the restaurant opened, and this, you know, I've always kind of had a love for southern food, to be honest with you, and. Uh, being in the south, I love shrimp and grits, so, you know, we got to bring it up here north to Chicago. And, uh, you know, it, it might seem, nice. you know, really just kind of foreign to people. And uh, I want to make it be known that it's delicious. It's big uh, flavors, and, you know, it's, it has some of that uh, Midwestern comfort that we like. So we're going to start on over here. Um, I want to talk about the sausage. This is an andouille sausage that I'm using. And basically, it's a Creole-style sausage, a lot of garlic, a lot of black pepper, a little bit of heat in there. Very delicious, okay? And if you want to go ahead and taste this, it's cooked, don't worry, um, in its form before I render just it. Just use your fingers. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm going to start this off. I'm a celebrity now. In the pan. <laughs> Thank you. And typically, in the south, you'll see them use bacon fat to cook the whole dish in with mm -hmm. the shrimp and the peppers, etc. So the andouille is kind of taking place of that right now. And some of that fat, a little excess oil. I'm going to go ahead and start getting some of that flavor out of there. And I'm going to go ahead and just fill in some quick peppers. We want to get these soft. And we're going to add the shrimp towards the end. People that have been to the south that come to Nixon's absolutely adore this dish because, you know, it's hard to find. And, uh, it, you know, if it's done right, I think people really appreciate it. So what makes a good grit? Stone ground grit. Okay. Um, actually, the grits you're going to be having today, my recent trip to Charleston, um, I brought back with me stone ground grits from Anson Mills, and uh, you're going to be having some really authentic grits to go with the shrimp today. Now the studio audience is interested in if they could purchase duck fat. I know that's our previous you segment, can. but we Absolutely didn't get the chance. Can. Um, and basically, you could go to any kind of high-end grocer. Okay. Um, you know, there's there's markets throughout Oak Park that would have it. Even Whole Foods might even have it. Okay. Trader Joe's, maybe. Um, your best bet would 
to go to kind of a gourmet grocer. Okay, great. Thank you. And excuse my ignorance. Is this like a liquid form? Is this solid? It comes solid. Okay. Okay. It looks okay. like um, it's just. It's okay. It looks like lard you. when you buy it, you know, and um, it'll break down. It breaks it down when you melt it. Exactly. Okay, and we're just gonna, peppers and meat. It smells kinda, good. We're gonna kind of just get these soft. Start rendering some of that flavor down. So what other southern uh, menu items do you have on your menu? Other su uh, southern items that we have on the menu um, right now basically are uh, yeah, the poor boy. The poor boy from New Orleans is really big. The sandwich uh, and the juicy fried Gulf shrimp, uh, basil pepper remoulade, toasted French. Try to keep it authentic to New Orleans. Um, Savannah fried green tomatoes we have on the menu as an appetizer. Wow. And those just fly out, people love them. Um, an unripened tomato, you fry it, you bring the sweetness to the center. Mm -hmm. So um, there's use for them, believe it or not. Okay? And we're going to go ahead on over here and meet up those grits we were talking about. So yep. your travels have inspired you. Do you then create the menu, or do you have someone else you work with to help? It's, it's solely myself. Okay. Um, my brother, partner of Nixon's as well, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's the front of the house man there, but, um, you know, he, has, he brings a lot of good passion, stu uh, passion from the culinary side as well, you okay. know, and uh, sometimes he'll be, uh, you know, out somewhere and he'll bounce an idea off of me and mm -hmm. we'll kind of just create it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the menu is basically just done by soul inspiration and love. It sounds like it. And yeah, how long right. does... If you, go, go ahead, go ahead nope, Farley. Nope, you were first, go. So typical. <laughs> how long does it take typically from the start of that idea to getting something on the menu? I mean, how long are you toying with the recipe? And I'm going to go ahead and add the shrimp. Yes. Salt shrimp, large Good shrimp here. Good question, Mr. Okay. Gale. That was where I was headed. If we're in the uh, phases of planning a new menu, say mm -hmm. like fall, winter, spring, summer, we change the menu four times a year. Seasonality is big with us. We like mm -hmm. to cook local as well. So, um, you know, it, it takes a little bit of time and inspiration. You know, mm -hmm. we, we got to get inspired somehow. We have to see it. You know, we have to taste it. We have to cook it, you know. Sure. And um, it, sometimes it can be a lengthy process of trying to tie up a dish. But for the most part, if you have an idea and you have the right ingredients, you're in the right direction. Okay. It's just technique and so if you ever need, love after that. If you ever need people to sample and criticize, <laughs> give you, we you can know, do that. We'll do your review We're for an excellent yes, channel. Yes. Now, do you, a restaurant, breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Lunch and dinner. Lunch and dinner. Okay. Lunch and dinner at Nixon's. What hours? And we are 11.30 to 9, Monday through Thursday. And Friday and Saturday, 11.30 to 10. We have a nice intimate bar in the back. You know, people, weekends, they, they stay a little bit longer. So uh, we do private parties at the restaurant on Sundays. We're closed, but we open up for private parties. Okay. Um, a number of different events, wedding showers, you know, birthdays, you name it. Um, and we do a whole customized catering menu, mimosa bar, all that fun stuff. Nice. Mimosa bars are always good. These shrimp are almost there. We're waiting for those to cook, and this dish is pretty much on its way. And these grits are heating up nice. And what's the ambiance of, of the restaurant? Mm -hmm. Is it is it cozy? Can I wear jeans and a t-shirt? Absolutely. Okay. We get a corporate crowd after dinner. Um, we get we get people on a date night. We get um, families. We get a mixture of everybody. I always say at Nixon's, and I've said it before. You'll see a concrete working or a concrete worker sitting down having a nice lunch. You'll see a busy CEO right next to him. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We're we're so approachable to everybody. There's something for everybody on our menu. And how long have you been in business? It's been uh, two and a half years. Okay, congratulations. And we're, we're happy to be in the Grange. Wonderful yeah, town. Nice location. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead over here with these stone ground grits, special for you guys today. Oh, wow. Good. Okay. It looks good. This is probably the most southern meal I've ever had. Oh. Really? Yeah. You're going to have a new love for it today. <laughs> I have a hard time staying away from is it the hot tom from Kentucky? You've never had one of those? No. Chicken and waffles. That's the most. Oh, there you shrimp go. are there. So, there you go. Right. that was We're just a couple go ahead weeks ago. Oh, we know Be generous with the shrimp today. Chicago. We're here talking about Nixon's. Right. <laughs> we'll go ahead and put that aside. <laughs> so, what is this now? And this is our Chicago. onion gravy. We put this on a sandwich. I actually called this, uh, it's called the crispy pig. You were asking about southern mm. um, things we have on the menu as well. It changes up, you know, for the most part. Uh, all, right. all the time, we come up with new things, but we have our staples there. Crispy pig is a fried pork cutlet um, that's crispy uh, and gooey sausage. This onion gravy, kraut cheese, Swiss, and on some like toasted artisan white bread. It's amazing. It's uh, you know, it's my version of a kind of a bohemian deconstructed meal, I guess, on a on a sandwich, <laughs> in a sandwich form, you know. And uh, 
This onion gravy goes on a number of items, especially, oh. in, especially in the winter. So it's onions, butter, we make a roux, we have a really nice stock that we uh, create it with, and uh, we cook it down. And here is your Carolina shrimp and grits. Thank wow. you very much. Hey. I'm going to go ahead and garnish this with a little bit of fresh chives. I don't want you passing this with them. I gave them forks, but they might need knives or uh, spoons. Okay. Voila. Voila. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Pete. Thank you. It's steaming. Grits for breakfast. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, I know. So that's nice that you're closed on Sundays and then you do some catering. So it's like if uh, you know if you have an event there, otherwise you kind of stay home and rest. Absolutely. From a hard week, you hard know, Friday and Saturday. You know, give everybody a rest. I have two young boys now, so it's nice to have that day to recoup and they have a fresh head, you know, at the start of the week. So, uh, but you know, private parties are great for us. They're they're fun because it's something different that you don't see all the time that's going on in the restaurant. You know, people can really customize things the way. Sure, that and that's nice for. that you customize. Yes. I mean, it's not just this is our menu. Yes. Like 25 of those. I mean, yes. You're gonna do something else. This grits. Your first instance. I swear to God, are the creamiest grits I've ever had. Yeah, they look creamy. I'll tell you right now, the flavor mixing with the onion. Right. It's it it works. So beautiful, balanced. Absolutely. Very, very good. Mr. Gale, Absolutely. what's your first reaction there? Well, it's, I mean, for, for these items and the consistency of the items, I think it's very aesthetically pleasing. Sure. That's my visual arts background. But sure. kind of the complementary colors, the, the garnish on top and everything, very nice. Very good. Excellent. Excellent. Outstanding. The grits are fabulous. Very good. I can Wonderful. feel that. Well, uh, we had our first grit for breakfast here from Mr. Nick here. Mm -hmm. uh, stay tuned. We're going to come back. We're going to have a beef brisket grilled cheese, which my friend here, Nick, calls it a um, adult grilled cheese sandwich. Can't wait for that. Come back and wait. Thanks. I didn't have a bite of the shrimp before. Oh, I forgot about the sauce. There we go. There we go. Mike, though. Hey, welcome back to your favorite show on cable, Cook Through This. I'm your host, Pete Calvetti, and we have Mr. Nick here from Nixon's Eatery in the Grange, cooking off some of his favorite dishes for our local celebrity judge panel, which consists of Mr. Matt Cindy, Mr. Gail, and Mrs. Patty Farley. Um, he's cooking his final dish of the day. Uh, we're gonna get some meat now, finally, over here. And uh, we just finished some grits. Now we're gonna have some beef, bris beef brisket grilled cheese. Take it over, Mr. Fantastic. Nick. Fantastic. Um, the story of this sandwich kind of was created uh, before the restaurant was open. Uh, I said, you know, to my wife one day, I, I just need a, I need a grown-up version of a grilled cheese. What, you know, what could I do to, to make that happen? Took some brisket, braised it down. Uh, I've used short rib in these two uh, and basically shred it to where it's really tender. And uh, we kind of build it with some nice fine cheese, uh, nice San Francisco-style sourdough. And mm -hmm. on we go, okay? This is a very popular Excellent. sandwich at the restaurant. And the big brick. And the big brick. We'll get to that. I'm just going to go ahead and give this a quick lacquer of butter. Okay. Just a little bit of butter. Just right. a little bit. We, we are good. fans of butter, garlic, yes, bacon here. Are. Seriously? Yeah. Yeah. Don't <laughs> definitely bacon. What is a grilled cheese without butter, right? <laughs> oh, both sides. No, not both, both sides. sides. I oh. do both sides. Do? And uh, yes. that's a stick of butter, let me tell you. I think it is. That's a chef's stick of butter. Yes. Sourdough adds what to the sandwich? Basically, uh, texture. Okay. And uh, it's a really dense bread, so it'll hold up nice at a gooey cheese, okay? So basically, what we're going to do now is take our braised brisket that was pressed down. We're going to put this over here. We're going to layer the sandwich with two pieces of Swiss cheese. Over here, we have a nice, true Wisconsin four-year-age yellow cheddar, okay? And this is going to nice. going, this is going to be on the other side, and we're going to place the brisket right in the middle there, okay? Do you marinate the brisket at all or anything? We don't, we cook it down um, in beef stock, onions, celery, carrot, also known as mirepoix, mm -hmm. uh, bay leaf, salt, pepper, really low and slow, and it just falls apart. Um, so basically what this adds is the lusciousness, this cheese, uh, on both sides with the brisket, and uh, you know, I, it, it picks up so much flavor that I've never really had to marinate it beforehand. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put a little extra butter in here just to make sure. Oh, because there's some on point. <laughs> now, in your restaurant menu, do you have vegetarian offerings? We do, we do. Uh, we have an, an array of beautiful salads. Um, we also just keep it casual with a veg head quesadilla, we call it. Um, some garlic spinach, sauteed mushrooms, corn relish in there. Garlic spinach. And uh, served with sweet potato fries. 
I'm gonna go ahead and press this down old school with a brick. Uh, oh, that's this, a real brick. And we keep, yeah, it really we, is. We keep the <laughs> bricks wrapped in the clean. restaurant uh -huh. for these brisket grilled cheeses. And uh, I was telling you the quick story of how this originated and that's, I went out to my garage, I found a brick, I wrapped it in foil and uh, you know, this is where the brisket grilled cheese kind of started. And th this is the best way to kind of press that sandwich down and melt that cheese and, 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 and have that meat starting to work with everything in mm -hmm. there. Wow. So, um, you the original panini. way. Yeah. Uh -huh. You don't need a panini maker. You just use it's not a true secret, but you don't see it too much, right? No, you don't see it much. They make not uh, that people admit things. anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and now I have to change the foil. Done. Uh oh, did we lose the heat? Yeah, just turn it on. It'll heat up in 30 seconds. Uh oh. That's why you have to do both sides. There we go. All right, so over here, some clean tongs. Take a look at this, see how we're doing on the other side, and it's coming up get together nice. I just want that heat going through there. Now at the restaurant, what would you serve this with, or is it on a, is it solo? This come, all sandwiches come with your choice of side. Okay. Um, we bring some old school tater tots back. Nice. French fries, you could upcharge to a crispy duck fat fry. Uh, sweet potato fries, fruit cup, let's say healthy now, or mixed green salad, with this, with, which just comes with a simple, uh, Citrus. That's great that you give those, those choices. <coughs> yeah. Originally, I mean, yeah. And what you're serving it's part today, of being approachable. You know, sure, we just absolutely. really try to give people that that value. What are the portions like? I mean, are we getting one plate? Like, is this is this one one sandwich? This is one sandwich one exactly oh. with your side. And the okay. grits and the shrimp was an example of one serving. Nice. The grits was exactly a sample of one entree. Okay, shrimp that's, and grits. That's large. Okay. Yes. Pretty much the only sides of choice that come with our, with our crafted sandwiches, as we call them. Um, I'm going to hand you guys a couple menus just to see our oh, sandwich great option idea. that's going great. on. The menu you'll see these is very actually vast. Don't, these don't have actually all of our sandwiches. We have about seven more that are on the lunch menu. This is the dinner menu, but we still offer a number of sandwiches for lunch. So what meat is now in season? What meat is now in season? Lamb, spring lamb. Okay. Yeah. Beef uh, is, is good. Uh, Farmers are starting to, you know, get active in the spring again, even though it's pretty steady all year round. But the local people are really into, uh, you know, moving the product onto Chicagoland restaurants, you know, for those who support local beef farms. Now, we don't usually take it in this direction, but I, I have to ask, um, on, the, on your menu, you have family-owned American wineries. Yes. Do you... Do you prefer more local or family-owned or you independent? You know, at Nixon's, we uh, really try to stay small batch production, artisan touch, um, you know, purveyors uh, that we really love to work with. And uh, for, for the wineries, you know, they're not, they're not, it's not a big major corporate winery. It's, you know, it's, it's a more, um, uh, to the point, you know, single family that owns the vineyard and, 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 and are really passionate about uh, what they do. And, you know, my brother does the wine pro. He's in charge of the wine program and Nixon's, you know, he'll call up the, the vineyard uh, sommelier and, and talk to them, you know, like they've been friends for 10 years, you know, <laughs> he knows the people and it's, it's mm -hmm. great to like know where your products, yeah, where, your, where your food yeah. and, your, gotcha. and your drink is coming from. Certainly. Know people your farmer, know your vineyard yeah. well, winemaker, right? right? But it's such a win-win situation, don't you think? That's why more restaurants are starting to do this approach? Oh, absolutely. You know, um, it, it's we're almost about there. So it's the quality is better. Um, you know, and 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 for, for the food aspect, you know, I, I mentioned you know the arugula on the fish. You know, comes 45 miles away from you know Marengo. Um, you know, from a local farmer that I've been working with for a while, Nichols Farm. And uh, you know, even the micro brews that we have on the list on the on the back, you know, we a lot of them are from Chicagoland area, mm -hmm. Argus, Goose Island. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we really try to focus on focus small on production, small production. You know what? I, I have to be honest. When I first picked up the menu, I thought there were a lot of options, but everything on here looks very unique yes. and, nice and different and. It looks like every time I go there, I'd find something I like. Pieces. Guys, pass over your plates. We're going to cut three really? pieces for you guys. Yeah. yeah. Why don't we just give me a plate? At the restaurant, we do these on big flat tops, so there's always some I mean, of them growing at one yeah. time. So if we manage to do it in a sauté awesome. pan, I think mm -hmm. it'll be just fine. And I love the regional. I Texan, love it. Texan, Texan yes. brisket tacos. I love the salmon, the elk burger, the roasted duck, crab the and Maui. avocado did tacos. You see, oh, did you see the Maui lettuce chicken I did. wraps? I love that you regionalize Thanks. it like yeah. that. I think that do, I, do you deliver to local high schools during the day? 
That looks awesome. Wow. Yeah, we have delivered our beef because I'm alone. Um, there we go. Wow. Here's our braised brisket grilled cheese. And I uh, like to serve a little bit of uh, barbecue dipping sauce with that just to cut through the richness. And uh, I'll pick it up. Oh, I, this, is for, this is for her. This, this is, is for her. Uh, oh, it's for her. I'm sorry. <laughs> Use some tongs, yeah, Mr. Gale. No problem. <laughs> Not to mention, you know, all the sandwiches. We have a number of obviously beautiful uh, entrees on the dinner menu. But well, I'm watching you guys eat. Um, I'm seeing that cheese stretch. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> that's what you want. And here's a little bit of barbecue to cut through that richness if you like. Sauce. And that just makes it nice. What's your first reaction, guys? Brisket cheese and sourdough bread. It's awesome. The butter, the sourdough, the brisket works all together real good. The crispiness. Excellent. Yeah, the sourdough really maintains its consistency even with the, the butter I'm and the still cooking. Over there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but it's so reminiscent of a grilled cheese sandwich. I mean, this is true. You've you've hit it on that description, and then of course that you've brought it up a notch with sure. the with Excellent. the levels yeah. of ingredients. This is the grown up version. Exactly. Grilled I cheese. Love that, that he made that. Yeah. 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 Even though kids order it, you know. But <laughs> you still have that. It's like a welcome home grilled cheese. Right. It's a grilled cheese, not a meat sandwich with cheese. Correct. It's an enhanced that's a good oh, way of looking at it. A yeah. very good way. It's There's just enough meat, kit. but mm -hmm. not too much. Not right. Italian mm -hmm. beef, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so well, thank you so much to my panel of judges. It was a great show, great food. I want to thank Mr. Nick from Nixon's Eatery, uh, downtown mm -hmm. LaGrange. Address is 30 South LaGrange Road. They're open Monday through Saturday. This is good too. Um, 11.30 in the morning, 9 till Thursday, and then 10 on the weekends. Mm -hmm. uh, their phone number, call for some catering. They do private catering on Sundays. You can have the whole place to yourself. How beautiful is that? That's 354-4995. I am your host, Pete Calvetti. Again, thank you to Nick and uh, Nixon's Eatery, downtown LaGrange, and stay hungry. We'll see you in the next episode. Thanks, Bye. Bye.